Is there any research or do you know what the effect of loneliness or isolation actually has on the brain from physical? Yeah, you know, work, work it's one of the major risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. Wow. Because yeah. when you're with someone, your brain has to work, right? You're reading social cues, you're thinking about whatever you're talking about. The, the brain's busy when we're connected. When we're isolated, we get sad. We know depression is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, but isolation all by itself is bad. So if you're feeling isolated, find a way to volunteer. Do something, get connected at church, at a community group that fits your level of interest. Uh, uh, I remember um, there's a study from the Baltimore um, Longevity Study where they, they took two groups of people. Um, one, they had volunteer. The other group, they just kept doing what they were doing. The people who volunteered grew their hippocampus. So the hippocampus is the major memory and mood structure in the brain. And it's one of the few areas of the brain that every day produces about 700 new baby stem cells. And when you're using it in a positive, purposeful way, it will actually grow that area of your brain. Beautiful, I love that. Hello, Dr. Amen. Hi. Hi there. Uh, I'm Kareem, and I'm very delighted to be speaking with you. Uh, I feel like this question and this presentation has come at a, a very important time uh, for me. Uh, quick, quick background, and then I'll give you my question. Um, my ACEs score is four. I've been in therapy and treatment uh, for a lot of issues since a strong burnout uh, early on in the pandemic. Uh, discovered childhood trauma. Uh, my mother had mental illness. Um, and I've just been kind of trying to heal and address that over the course of the past nine-ish months or so. Um, major issues now are like anxiety and depression. Uh, and it's just, it's a, it's a roller coaster ride. Uh, I'm, very much like you, uh, I struggle with uh, self-worth issues and feeling like uh, I'm not important or trying to find significance. Um, so my question for you is, I find myself on this roller coaster, you know, where I have good days, I might have good weeks um, where I feel great. But then, you know, I, I don't journal as consistently. You know, I'm not doing my gratitude journal anymore. Or I stop meditating or I don't do my tapping or you know, certain things start to slip in terms of my self-care. And then I just slide and, and kind of start getting into that uh, kind of depressive state where I feel hopeless. Am I always gonna be like this? I start having these ants. Uh, I feel like the, the caterpillar who's becoming a butterfly, but I'm in that part where I'm in the chrysalis and I'm just a big pile of goo <laughs> and completely <laughs> turned into just mush. Um, and I just, I, I feel so fragile. You know, if I don't do these things, I don't feel good. But then I resent doing these things because why do I have to do these things to feel good? It's just, it's just a struggle. So any, any advice, any wisdom um, as I try to grow some wings here? I, I am so grateful that you shared that because so many people feel like you feel. And as I said earlier, pain shared is pain divided. And know when you're not alone, that millions of people are suffering and you're smart enough to work to get help. And I would be the scientist and the subject. I love that. I would begin to notice your patterns of what, so when people come to see me, I always go to my board and I draw a graph and I'm like, you know, 
people have good days and bad days, but I'm at the bottom of the graph. You know, they have good days and bad days, but they're mostly bad, which is why they came to see me. And then we intervene and they get better. But nobody just gets better, right? They're better and then they're not. And then they're better still, but then not. But then better still. And over time, they have good days and bad days, but they're nothing like where we started. And what I often say, it's the bad days you want to pay attention to and go, what triggered it? Is it a season? Because then you might have seasonal affective disorder and having a bright light in the morning will just help you so much. Is it the negativity is really a bad habit that you've not worked hard enough to control? And so whenever you feel sad or mad or nervous or out of control, write it down. And then, you know, in my work, I teach people how to kill the ants, the automatic negative thoughts. If, and you absolutely should take the happiness challenge because in it, there's the know your dragons questionnaire. So you know which ones to work on. There's what brain type do you have? So you can get on the right supplements. And if they don't work, the right medication because medication is not failure. Medication is just a thing. And, you know, for me, I always, almost always try natural things first and they very often work, but if they don't, I'm totally going to drug you. Um, Just because your brain can have problems like your heart can have problems. I remember when Justin Bieber came into my office and he's a superstar. And which means most of the superstars I see do what I say 10% of the time. And they're generally late and, you know, and he came into my office one day and this was a rough season for him. And he said, my brain is an organ like my heart is an organ. If you told me I had heart problems, I'd do everything you said. I'm going to start doing what you say. And then he got radically better. Uh, I'm just so proud of him. We'll teach you, you know, other things through the challenge as well. But if you are doing all the right things and you still slip in to the darkness, there very well may be a genetic component. You said your mother grew up with it. So not only did you get the trauma of growing up with someone who had, let's not call it a mental illness. Let's call it a brain health issue. I hate the term mental illness. I despise the term mental illness because it shames people. It's stigmatizing and it's wrong. They're brain health issues. Something was not right with her brain and that's why she acted the way she did. Odds are, right? So anyways, I hope that's helpful to you. It is, thank you. And uh, have fun at Disneyland. Thank you. (laughs) Hi there, thank you. So much. Um, my question for you is I'm actually, I would say a recovering people pleaser. Um, I'm doing better in my personal life, but my problem is my career actually requires me to be a people pleaser. So I'm in sales and therefore my customer service is important that I make people happy. And obviously for sales, people have to like me. So how can I wrap my mindset around that without it being as stressful as being a people pleaser? in my personal life? That's really a great question. And I think compartmentalizing it, but still in sales, you want to be authentic and you want to be likable, right? Because sales is (laughs) a relationship. In your personal life, you probably also want to be likable. you just don't want to say yes in the all the time. And your brain is always listening. They're bad habit dragons. Uh, and one of the bad habit dragons is the yes, yes, yes dragon, where you're always saying yes. And in fact, you should say, I have to think about it. <laughs> so you really like the book. And it's what I do. I teach my patients in the mirror when someone asks you to do something rather than automatically saying yes, or automatically say no, go, 
I have to think about that. Let me think about that. And then you go back to your goals. We have an exercise called the one page miracle on one piece of paper, write down, what do you want? Relationships, work, money, physical, emotional, spiritual health. What do you want? And then go, well, does it fit? And at work, making your customers happy, as long as it's rational, right? I mean, you don't want to do irrational things for them either. Um, it's like, oh, well, that fits for me to go the extra mile. Well, when one of your friends who's asked you to do it 45 times asks you to go the extra mile, but they don't reciprocate, then you go, you don't have to think about that. And then you decline. If it doesn't fit, the goals you have for your life. So those three words, that's a little meditation for me. Does it fit? Because people ask me to do stuff all the time. And if it doesn't fit, I say, no. Um, Tony Blair actually said, the number one hallmark of a leader, the former prime minister of the UK, is his ability or her ability to say no right? Because there's only so much time. You want to make sure you're doing things that serve your health, your relationships, the reason you're on the planet. And so wanting other people to like you is such a trap. It's such a trap. Uh, it's an evolutionary trap, right? Because if we get people to like us, they, you get to be part of the group and the group protects us from dying. Um, but at the same time, we just have to ask, does it fit? As well as a couple of questions from the audience today in the app. And the first one was you mentioned about blood sugar and the importance of that and reference like becoming hangry. How did you, uh, you work with a lot of celebrities on this actually, H how do you teach them to manage their blood sugar, because it's such a simplistic idea and notion, but I bet 90% of the people watching this right now have, have experienced hanger in the last month. So it's like, how do you get off the hangry train? Well, you make brain healthy food a priority. And, you know, I talked about the weapons of mass destruction. We are in a society where a whole bunch of people are making money on your early death. And I was driving down the freeway here in Southern California on the right side, and it was in Long Beach, was a huge billboard for a fast food sandwich called the Tower of Torta from AMPM gas stations. I just huge. And I'm like, well, that'll kill people early. And as I turned my head to the left side of the freeway, I saw a billboard for losing weight with lap band. And I'm like, this is the insanity of our society. Let us get these beautiful women like Catherine Webb and have them have a Carl's Jr. sandwich, which you know in real life they'll never eat, but they'll go, if you eat this unconsciously, you're going, well, she'll want me if I eat this. She won't want you if you eat that. But we're in this crazy period of time where food that is unhealthy, that is disease promoting, think of a happy meal, it should be labeled an unhappy meal, um, are just being marketed to us relentlessly. And if you wanna keep your blood sugar healthy, um, think of eating three or four times a day, but to put protein and healthy fat in each meal. I start, I do intermittent fasting. So I usually go 12, 16 hours a day. And, but I always start with a protein shake that has healthy fat in it. And um, it's just loaded with nutritious things and it tastes great. So I'm happy, right? The big principle I've been working on is you only want to love food that loves you back, that you're in a relationship with food. So if you're looking at brownies or ice cream or pizza or pasta, and you're like, oh, that makes me so hungry, your brain's attached to the wrong images. And yeah. learning how to change that is so important. 
That's good. Uh, just the simplest act of eating multiple times a day, increasing protein and fats, game changer for me, especially adding fats in probably right after I saw you, I started changing my diet a little bit more to add more fats. I guess this was like, uh, what was that, 2011? So that's so long ago, that's 10 years ago. Um, and was a game changer for me. Just my all day energy was really, really critical. Luciana, coming your way. Hi, Brendan, it's such an honor to, to speak to you. I'm talking from Brazil. I have a, a very simple question. How to overcome procrastination in something you don't like, but you need? Uh, for instance, I bought a treadmill so I can exercise. That's my, that's the most difficult thing for me in the world. The rest I, a game, but to exercise, I'm very lazy. And I can manage to go from the couch to the treadmill. I'm oh. going to, Luciana, it's such a good question. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Daniel Amen take that because he has helped uh, with one of his books, The Daniel Plan, has helped people lose literally millions of pounds and get into exercise around the world. Uh, Doc, would you like to take on that one? I think that's a great question for you. Thank so, you. So actually in the book, one of the bad habit dragons is on procrastination. And because it's just such a common thing. And to, to break bad habits, there's five steps. You want to identify it. So that's one of the bad habit dragons. You want to know, well, what problems does it cause in your life? And the procrastination bad habit dragon unnecessarily postpones actions or decisions. You end up waiting to the last minute. You're mad at yourself or others are mad at you. Um, you want to recognize the cues and triggers, so deadlines faced with a task or decision, your expectation to get on the treadmill or somebody else's expectation. You want to go, so what's the reward I get out of procrastinating? So you can do other things like stay on the couch, um, but it's really not in your best interest, is it? And so you need to develop a new routine. And my friend BJ Fogg will say, what's the smallest thing you can do to get to the treadmill? And so I know you can go for a minute. And so that's what you do. You do the smallest thing you're able to do. And he might even say, well, let's go smaller. Let's just put your tennis shoes out. And if you can at least put your tennis shoes out and then the next step is put them on and then go, okay, I'm just going to do this for a minute. Well, tomorrow you'll go for two minutes and then you might go for four minutes. So if you just sort of work into it, it can be so helpful, but it's very important. I heard your language and you called yourself lazy. And whenever you let the ants, and I didn't talk about the ants, the automatic negative thoughts jump on you, they hurt you. And so your internal language is really important. I want you to talk to yourself like a good mother would talk to you, not as a wicked friend or a bad coach or a bad teacher. So it sounds like there's too many ants running around up there. And Brendan, um, I have a new technique. I actually stole it from my friend, Stephen Hayes, that I just love so much. It's called Give Your Mind a Name. Mm -hmm. And um, I gave my mind the name of my pet raccoon when I was 16. She talked all the time and never said anything meaningful. And she tortured people. Like she TP'd my mother's bathroom. She once took a crap in one of my shoes that I put on. I mean, you know, but just like my mind, it's a troublemaker. And so if you give your mind a name, then you can choose to listen to it or not. But you want to be like a good coach for yourself notice what you do right more than what you do wrong and just see, you know, can you do a minute? And if you do a minute one day, do two the next day. And then you work up pretty soon, 
you know, you're doing a half an hour, 45 minutes because you love yourself, right? It's never about should. Another of the big dragons in the book, the most common dragon is the should and shaming dragon where you're always shooting all over yourself. And I always want you to change. Whenever you think I should do something, just, and this helped Miley so much, um, change should to I want to, or change should to it fits my goals to. Because if you don't want to, and it doesn't fit your goals to, you probably shouldn't do it. And I just find those can be some things that'll help you. So good, so good. Luciana, I'll throw in there Thanks. something you learned from high performance research in the area of wellness is three super simple things um, to get yourself in an exercise routine. First and foremost, almost all research points back to do it first thing in the morning. So procrastination isn't there, right? If you're gonna, I'm doing it three o'clock, it's easy to procrastinate, but if you, it's just the routine, it's first thing, move. Like get up, as Amos said, put those shoes on, pick the podcast the night before that you're gonna listen to and go. Second biggest thing in sociology studies of wellness was get a partner. So it's like, if you and your neighbor decide every morning seven or 6.30 a.m. or 7 a.m., we're gonna get up and we're gonna walk two and a half miles together. That will stick way more than if you just get up and do it by yourself. So having a partner or a trainer, someone who's keeping you motivated and accountable to show up is absolutely necessary. It's why I'm always encouraging you all, go in the community members area, share your goals, cheer each other on, have workout buddies, uh, promotional buddies, friends you leaning on who are like, hey, Luciana, where are you? We're supposed to start right now. I think that's very important. That's why Peloton even is kicked off so much is like, oh, you make your little friends, you're not on the bike in the morning, they see you're not there, they text you. I think it's very, very, very important to have a partner. And then the third thing that is so simple and, and um, Dr. Amon teaches this in a great book, one of my favorite books he has, which is um, Change Your Brain, Change Your Body you have to have a specific goal for why you want to get healthy. And you need to look at that goal, remind yourself of that goal, pray on that goal, speak that goal. Why is it important for me to get more healthy? Who do I need to get more healthy for? And really think about that, meditate that on, pray on that in the morning, then get right at doing the exercise. And if you can include another person, whether it's virtually or in person, or it's your neighbor, or it's a trainer who keeps you accountable, those three simple move, those three simple things, those will form and stick that habit even that much better. Is that helpful, Luciana? Life changing. Thank you. I'm you glad. Great being you here. We're going to keep you accountable. We're going to bug you. We're going to ask you if you got that treadmill next month. You better be careful. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.